Greetings, Internet. I thought I would use some footage that my wife took on our recent riding around the Connecticut River, crossing back and forth between New Hampshire and Vermont for this video. My wife rides her 2022 BRP Can-Am Riker Rally Edition, which is a fabulous all-rounder platform from unpaved roads to long-haul touring, and it makes a fabulous camera platform for capturing the beauty and splendor of New England. I don't really expect this video to do very well. It's not primarily focused on the Kawasaki W800 or the Can-Am Riker Rally Edition. The initial pair of themed videos I made for the channel, I will link these at the end of the video, were around group rides and how our new rider could identify the differences between well-planned rides with good ride leaders and poorly organized rides with poor ride leaders. For no good reason, I'll qualify a group ride as having three or more motorcycles involved. I'll talk a bit about couple riding, which I'll qualify as stating couple riding consists of two motorcycles, even if there are multiple riders per motorcycle. Most of the riding I've done in my multiple decades of riding is solo riding. Most of the riding I've done this year is couple riding with my wife. Some advantages that couple riding has that group riding does not include being able to move as a single vehicle in some instances. Stoplight specifically is what I'm referring to. You are usually riding with somebody you know, and in my case, riding with my wife. We tend to move together and able to anticipate and trust the other rider implicitly. Some advantages that couple riding has over solo riding is built-in safety of another rider and better visibility. When I was younger, I used to make things up to justify things I did that did, I didn't really think through. I'll provide a super silly example of what I mean. My first motorbike was a 1979 Vespa P200E, the maximum speed of which is 68 miles per hour or 110 kilometers an hour. In my experience, that's downhill with a tailwind. While riding the Vespa, I didn't always wear a helmet, and I made things up, like I use my hearing to know what's going on around me. I was never in a multi-vehicle crash with the Vespa, but I did have a single vehicle rack while riding at 17 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 8.3 Celsius and hitting a lovely patch of black ice. I bring this up because I use Cardo PackDot communicators that does allow for listening to music with a lovely pair of JBL upgrade speakers in the helmet and Bluetooth to my mobile device. The PackDot makes a huge difference in being able to communicate with another writer or even a group of writers. There are those who, like I did in my youth, like to pretend that wearing a full-face helmet or listening to music impairs their ability to hear dangers around them. The reality is that at speed, the loudest sound you hear without full-face helmet or hearing protection is wind. This goes for those who believe the loud pipes save lives or LPSL trope as well. I'm not a subscriber of the LPSL trope, as it's been debunked. Uh, links in the description. Ever notice, when you get your driver's test, the only human sense that is tested is your vision. Curious, isn't it? The reality is that vision is our primary interface on the road. Removing distractions, like handheld mobile devices, and keeping eyes on the road and sides of the road is paramount for road safety. With motorbikes, our visibility is less than that of automobiles, something I refer to as the threat matrix. But to be perfectly plain, I watch a YouTube channel called Idiots in Cars, and if people are hitting semi-trucks and police vehicles, it's very clear that some drivers aren't watching at all. I'm not sure what they were doing, but looking at where they were going was not it. For a bit more than half of all motorbike crashes, the causes include excessive speed, lack of experience and or training, and riding while under the influence. All of these are within control of the rider and remedied without addressing anyone else. So in this video, I'm asking all riders to stay within your comfort zones while turning, take appropriate rider training courses, and always ride completely sober. If you're riding as a couple or in a group or by yourself, if you're riding as a couple, Make sure that you're making allowances for the motorcycle in front of you or behind you to make full use of their road lane. Don't assume that because they're riding staggered formation that you can occupy the space in the road next to them. It's not your space, it's their space. That's all I got to say for today. I do hope that everybody has a fantastic uh, riding experience. 
Keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down. Cheers.